Okay, sir. Okay, very good afternoon, my dear friends. Today's eminent resource person, Dr. Rani Komidi, Assistant Professor, Department of Botany, Government Degree College, Siddipet, Autonomous. Madam is going to explain uh, nitrogen fixation in that uh, nitrogen metabolism, one of the important area, biological nitrogen fixation, Madam is going to continuation in yesterday class also. Madam, please continue and... Uh, Okay, sir. Very good afternoon to my dear students. Today we are going to discuss about that the nitrogen metabolism in that one class is completed uh, yesterday. So in that continuation purpose, today we are going to discuss about that the biological nitrogen fixation continuation. Okay. So as I told you, what is nitrogen metabolism? So nitrogen metabolism is uh, the Completely, it is two types, biological, just wait. Okay, so in that, the biological nitrogen fixation, abiological nitrogen fixation. So abiological means it is also known as a physical nitrogen fixation. That means the conversion of free nitrogen into nitrogenous compounds without any help of biological uh, organisms or uh, biological means is known as a biological nitrogen fixation. So second one is the biological nitrogen fixation. So in that the biological nitrogen fixation, it is a process by which nitrogen is fixed in plants with the help of certain aerobic bacteria. So in that some biological nitrogen fixation was first discovered by Dutch Nana. Dutch, D-U-T-C-H, Dutch, he is a, a famous microbiologist and uh, Martinus Bajerenki also, he contribution also is there. So in 1901, only in that the certain organisms like prokaryotes, so such as bacteria and cyanobacteria, they will, they can fix atmospheric nitrogen. So that is the biological nitrogen fixation. Okay, that means in the simple way, the conversion of atmospheric dinitrogen, that means N2, molecular nitrogen, into a chemical form, which plants and microbes, they can use for growth. So that is called biological nitrogen fixation. Okay, so the biological nitrogen fixation, it requires a complex set of enzymes and a huge expenditure of the ATP. So although the first stable product of the process, that is the ammonia, and this is quickly incorporated into protein and other organic nitrogen. So all this, last class we will discuss that. And just a minute. Okay, so these all are the some examples. Nitrogen fixing organisms. The nitrogen fixation is takes place by uh, two types, a symbiotic and symbiotic. So symbiotic nitrogen means the symbiotic nitrogen fixation. So it is a system. Uh, the nitrogen fixing systems are found in many vascular plants and non-vascular plants. So in that a number of angiosperms also uh, added. So members of family leguminacy. So it is very best example of the symbiotic nitrogen fixation. Okay. So in that almost to the this process, the rhizobium, it is contact a susceptible root here. This is the diagrammatic. I will show that this is the formation of root nodule. We will discuss in last class. So the biological nitrogen fixation is only okay so sorry the formation of root nodules that means the free living bacteria they are found in soil rhizosphere as i told you in last class so the root nodules are induced by bacteria that is rhizobium bacteria so they enter the host by way of root hairs. So they are, uh, which undergo the characteristic curling. 
that is the uh, deformed structures will observe in that the first two plant part and the second is the rhizobium attached to the root hair so uh, it will uh, converted into that means which in entering of the enter the host by the root hairs it is undergo the curling uh, structure so as the same time apparently due to auxins synthesis by the bacteria the loosening of cell wall in response to auxin and by a digestion of the cell wall so that is pectins by the enzyme polygalactronose okay so it is completely auxins the digestion of the cell wall that by the enzyme polygalactronose by the host in response to the bacterial association so helping in the um, help in the uh, making the entry of the bacteria okay so that is completely the infection thread is formed so an infection thread is formed through which bacteria enter the root cells okay so then after almost entering of bacteria that is followed by organization of bacteria into a thread like alignment so that is also known as infection thread so we'll observe that the infection thread it moves inwardly and it penetrates into the cortex and uh, almost to less uh, even to the pericycle also it is occupied okay so the recent studies they will show the entry is not essentially into the tetraploid cells uh, by almost we will observe the electron microscopy it will shows that infection thread is made up in part of the greatly enfolded plasma lemma of the cell so the plasma lemma of the cell it is being invaded you can observe that the bacteria uh, changing into bacteroids so it is packed root cells is the enlargement of the structure okay so that means the bacteria it will uh, repeatedly so it will reproduce uh, greatly inside the thread so the bacteria are liberated into the cytoplasm and it stimulate the cortex or pericycle cells to divide and divide so due to continuous divisions the proliferation of the tissues takes place and uh, they develops a mature nodules so it made up of the host cells filled with the bacteria okay so this is the third step nana bacteria is changing into bacteroids so you will observe that bacteroids are uh, almost uh, it will takes continuous divisions due to such divisions the proliferation of the tissue also takes place and develops a mature uh, uh, knob like structure or mature bubble like structure so that is the nodule made up of the host cells so the at the same time the bacterial divisions is also accompanied with the division of the um, division of plant membrane so the each bacteria or a group of bacteria is surrounded by an envelope okay so that means the envelope is divided from the host cells so the enlarged or non motile bacteria in the membranes they are called the bacteroids that is the bacteroids the simple single cells are known as a bacteroids so number of bacteroids are formed in the envelope so the envelope is derived from the host cells the that means the enlarged and non motile bacteria in the membrane is called as a bacteroids okay so whenever the formation of the bacteroids uh, the vascular tissue of the root it is set up continuity with newly differentiated vascular tissues of the nodule okay so in that the bacteroids they will contain the essential nitrogen fixing enzymes so this is very important in entrance point of view bacteroids contain essential nitrogen fixing enzymes okay so the enzyme means that is the nitrogenase almost to nitrogenase enzyme and other some of the nip genes also containing in this way the in this the atp it is the energy source nana adenosine triphosphate atp is required for uh, nitrogen fixation so in this uh, in the bacteroids also contain a reddish pigment that is called leg hemoglobin so it is also very important almost in the third step 
the bacteroids bacteroids are the uh, enlarged cells and non motile cells they are filled in the envelope so they are undergoing the continuous divisions they can newly differentiated cells so they contain the essential nitrogen fixing enzyme and at the same time a reddish pigment that is called leg hemoglobin so for this purpose it will require some energy source that is the atp is required for the nitrogen fixation okay so almost as i told you that leg hemoglobin that means the hemoglobin of the legumes that is found in infected host cells of the nodules so that is the uh, nodes or nodules knob like structures we will observe in the root part so the infected host cells of nodules uh, this pigment is capable of the nitrogen fixation which purpose the leg hemoglobin is essential for in this way the red color pigment it is capable of the nitrogen fixation so it is the only hemoglobin like protein occurring in the higher plants uh, this pigment it will facilitates the oxygen diffusion also okay so not only the uh, capable of the nitrogen fixation the leg hemoglobin or this red color pigment it is facilitates the oxygen diffusion to the greatly uh, respiring nitrogen fixing bacteroids okay so that means the bacteroids of the nodules and the stimulate the atp synthesis by the bacteroids so this all process is it is the third step you can observe here in the diagram the third step is very essential for the uh, almost the nitrogen fixation purpose it will contain the red color pigment that is the leg hemoglobin and it is also containing the some uh, nitrogen fixing enzymes or in other way so that is known as nif genes nif nitrogen fixing genes or nitrogen fixing enzymes all uh, will be occurring in this way so it is the only hemoglobin like protein occurring in the higher plants so it the pigment the leg hemoglobin or red color pigment it facilitates the oxygen diffusion to the respiring nitrogen fixing bacteroids so that means almost to all these process done under the it will utilize the energy source that is the atp atp energy source also we will use in this process okay so that is the almost to the formation of the root nodule nana uh, you can observe in other diagram that is the nodulation in the legumes so in simple way uh, that is the attachment free rhizobium bacteria is attached to the uh, leguminaceae family plants like uh, almost uh, all the root nodule angiosperms or root nodule forms so the plant uh, polar attachment and the second will root hair uh, it will completely close one to a uh, by uh, it secretes some enzymes auxins also it will secrete so uh, in that contact the bacteria and the root part will closely association and third step entering of the bacteria the thread it will look like a curling so curling structure you can observe and the root hair curls after rhizobium it contact to stops cell growth and then after the infection thread penetrates to the cortex cells so they can cause them to divide and divide so at the same time the curling root root hair is invading the bacteria so infection cells and the next to infected cells and dividing cells both will occurring in the next step so after that the in, in the undifferentiation of the rhizobium we will observe that that is the mitochondria cell wall healthy cells vascular and number of bacteroids they can undergo the division takes place in the uh, cell uh, internal cell so after that the bacteroids peribacterial membrane root nodule they all the bacteroids they can accumulate at the same part not part so it look like a bubble like structure that is the nodule is formed in the root part so that is the root nodules are formed so in the the formation of the root nodules almost it require the atp energy so after that 
a reddish pigment that is the leg hemoglobin also uh, uh, processing in the last step so almost uh, the pigment is capable of the nitrogen fixation and it will facilitate the oxygen diffusion to the nitrogenase engine okay so almost uh, we will discuss in the non symbiotic nitrogen fixation so in the biological or in the symbiotic nitrogen fixation uh, what is the mechanism uh, almost non symbiotic yesterday we will discuss just i will repeat one or two steps the fixation carried out by free living microorganisms that is the non symbiotic nitrogen fixation or asymbiotic nitrogen fixation almost so the nitrogen fixation takes place by two steps we will discuss that a symbiotic and symbiotic symbiotic and non symbiotic anyway so uh, a symbiotic means or non symbiotic means they are again almost the free living aerobic and anaerobic bacteria occur in many soils so but they uh, furnish significantly to the soil uh, nitrogen under special conditions like uh, uh, abundant plant tissues and high water content so in that in blue green algae only we know that the only heterosis to fix the nitrogen in blue green algae like nasta canabina silatoria so number of species are there in the cyanophyce family members so they can only heterosis can fix the nitrogen fixation so but the blue they have important contribution in the rice fields we know that and uh, almost to uh, uh the presence of heterocyst is an indicate of the nitrogen fixing ability in the pre living form so uh, as per same in lichens the formation of the heterocyst is not a uh, prerequisite for the nitrogen fixation okay so that is almost uh, the fixation carried out by pre living microorganism aerobic anaerobic and blue green algae some bacteria is also special type of bacteria they can fix the nitrogen so you can observe here pre living aerobic just azotobacter and bisarenchia so these are all very important in entrance point of view pre living aerobic asymbiotic nitrogen fixing bacteria that is azotobacter bisarenchia and free living anaerobic so in the absence of Air. so pre living anaerobic asymbiotic nitrogen fixing bacteria that is the clastridium clastridium and pre living photosynthetic organisms so that is the chlorobium rhodopseudomonas okay chlorobium and rhodopseudomonas is example for pre living photosynthetic asymbiotic nitrogen fixing bacteria and pre living chemosynthetic so that is d sulfo vibrio bacteria and thiobacillus so thiobacillus is sulfur bacteria d sulfo vibrio bacteria so it is used for the cleaning of some high amount of the water so like uh, ganga jal and meeku almost in the first semester we'll discuss that the d sulfo vibrio bacteria so it is the parasitic bacteria that is the free living chemosynthetic bacteria okay so free living fungus some yeast and uh, pilularia so these both are the free living fungus uh, asymbiotic bacteria and blue green algae you know that unicellular uh, gliotheca and uh, senicococcus and filamentous that means non heterocystous back uh, blue green algae that is the acillatoria and uh, heterocystous bacteria that is tolipotrix nasta anabina so these all are Uh, quite uh, that the all are the very important examples of the asymbiotic or non symbiotic nitrogen fixing bacteria okay bacteria aerobic some many in simple way many species of azotobacter anaerobic bacteria so number of species of the rhodospirillum and other genera and anaerobic or non photosynthetic so that is clastridium and blue green algae anabina nasta these all are the asymbiotic nitrogen fixing bacteria so in the same way uh, just wait and uh, what is the conclusion of the 
nitrogen fixation. So almost to the process of converting atmospheric nitrogen into nitrogenous compounds by living organism. So that is called biological nitrogen fixation. We know that. So nitrogen is an essential. Uh, it is for necessary for plant growth and development. So, but it is in short supply in its most common form. That is the atmospheric nitrogen, molecular nitrogen. Okay. So in that way, the plants, on the other hand, they can rely on compounded of or fixed nitrogen sources like ammonia and nitrate. Okay. So in that, almost much of this nitrogen is supplied to uh, cropping the systems in the form of nitrogen fertilizers. So some nitrogen fertilizers, they can manufacture in the factories also. So the synthetic fertilizers, just like the use of these fertilizers has resulted in a slew of global environmental issues. So they can include in the establishment of coastal dead zones. On the other hand, the biological nitrogen fixation, it will provide the uh, plants with a natural source of nitrogen. So that's why it's an important part of many aquatic and terrestrial ecosystem all around the world. So in that way, the nitrogen, it is a limiting nutrient for plants, even though the molecular nitrogen is uh, readily available in atmosphere. The plants, they do not have the nitrogenase enzyme. Does it have to depend on prokaryotes to absorb the nitrogen? So in this, uh, the nitrogen fixation is the first step of nitrogen cycle. Okay, nitrogen fixation, it is the first step step of the nitrogen cycle and it is of two types. So almost we'll discuss that biological and non-biological nitrogen fixation. So in that biological nitrogen fixation occurs in two ways. That means a symbiotic. So a symbiotic where it involves the prokaryotic interaction with plants. Symbiotic means so it involves the prokaryotic interaction with plants via root nodules and asymbiotic where the free living microorganisms fix the atmospheric nitrogen into the soil. Okay, so these all are the biological nitrogen fixation. And in non-biological fixation, it involves the lightening process. So as I told you that, to fix atmospheric nitrogen into the soil. So because of high demand of energy, this nitrogen fixation is uh, tightly regulated by various methods. So in that almost and next we will go to the mechanism or the nitrogen cycle. Okay. 